Hey, it's Mike with Tech BB, and we're gonna do a Tipman show and get a couple of the products that I've had here that we've been testing out and let you guys know what we thought of them. First things, let's talk about the TPX pistol. This is actually a really well designed little pistol. Um, I, you know, I didn't know what to expect getting this in the mail, um, but this has been a really good performing pistol since I've had it. I will tell you that the TPX pistol is not something that you want to be shooting Ultra Evil through. <laughs> okay, you want to be using some, you know, uh, some mid-grade, little bit tougher shell type paint if you're going to be trying to shoot this close to 300 feet per second, okay? It is a little bit tough on paint, which most pistols are, but, um, but this one really seemed to be tough on paint around 300 feet per second shooting, uh, you know, especially shooting premium. Um, but once I went down to a little bit more of a mid-grade style paint, something with a little bit of a tougher shell, you know, like a Spectrum or something like that, it seemed to, you know, calm down a little bit more. And also, once I was above about 285 on the velocity, you know, once you start getting around 295 on the velocity, it seems to be a little bit more rough on paint than if you're shooting right around about 280 to 285. But with that being said, not only is it going to be a little more efficient, but it's also going to be more, you know, it's also going to be a little more gentle on paint if you keep it around the 285 range. Now. What are from some of my favorite things about the TPX pistol? Well, there's a lot of design in it. Um, I love the little clear windows that are you know on the top and on the sides. Um, unfortunately, the top window really seemed to serve whether or not I broke paint or not. <laughs> Anytime I broke paint, you know that turned pink or whatever color the paint was. But the probably my favorite thing about the TPX pistol, besides the fact that the magazines are really cheap, which is awesome. You know, some of the other pistols on the market, the, expen the magazines are really expensive. The magazines for the TPX pistol are very cheap. You can carry quite a few of them. Is this right here? If you take the, um, you take your CO2 cartridge and you put it in. Okay, now the, the CO2 cartridge has not been pierced yet, okay? This is probably one of the best things about the TPX pistol is that as of right now, there is no air pressure inside of the gun, okay? Here comes, out comes the CO2 cartridge, okay? Now, the advantage of that is you have to think when you're out there on the field, okay, and you're going to be using a pistol, you don't want the CO2 cartridge to be pierced the whole time you're out there because it's going to leak. <laughs> so when you go to actually use it, if you're at home, you're used to getting, you know, 15, 16 shots, you may only get eight out there on the field if it's been four hours since you pierced the CO2 cartridge. You know, they're not, it's not a perfect seal. It will leak and throughout the day. And if you actually pull it out to use it, if the CO2 cartridge is pierced in the morning and it's two o'clock in the afternoon, there's a good chance that you're going to bleed all, you know, all the air is going to be leaked out. Anyway, so like I said, there is no air in the, uh, there is no uh, air in the gun right now. Let's go ahead and lock it back in. We'll put the magazine in. There's no paint in here. And um, well, how you pressurize the gun is when you first pull the trigger, you pull the trigger hard, it pressurizes the gun. So it can be in your holster the whole time. And then when you're ready for it and you're ready to take it out, you take it, pull the trigger hard once, and then it's ready to shoot. And I'm going to put the barrel sock in here because it's like 2 in the morning. I don't wake my daughters up. But um, as you can see, now it's ready to shoot because it's pierced it on the first trigger pull. So then you shoot it. There it goes. And then now it dies. So that's probably my favorite part about the TPX pistol is that it's kind of back in like the old PGP days where you it didn't pierce it until you were ready to shoot it. It doesn't stay aired up the whole entire time. That is really, really trick. The, um, I will tell you that actually one of the best ways that I found to carry the TPX pistol was with my standard fanny pack, like my NXC fanny pack. You know, you, you know when you, you've got the two long straps that overhook each other and then you have the two short waist straps that kind of snug your pack on? What I would do is I would just take that one little snug side you know, the, the little, um, the, what is it, the, like the spandex side that just kind of, you know, Velcro's into place, take it, put it there, and then Velcro right over the top of it. Actually, it's really comfortable to do it that way, and it's not going to fall out. It works really, really well. It puts it right there on your hip. So, you know, I know that uh, Tipman makes a holster for it, but if, you know, you can't afford the holster, you don't like how the holster's configured, try it that way, because it actually worked really well. In the woods, or in scenario, the best time to have a pistol is when you're playing at night. 
Okay, because you're going to be out there just shooting off into oblivion anyway. You're going to be shooting your own teammates and whatever. But the best time to have a pistol is at night because you're basically just out there to run missions. So you want to be able to have your hands to kind of take a look around and stuff like that. And then when you're ready to shoot, pull your pistol out, shoot whatever you want, put it back in. So you don't want to be out there 20 balls per second shooting at oblivion. I mean, you have no idea what you're shooting at in the, at nighttime anyway. A pistol is really good to have when you're playing night games just because you're not going to shoot a lot of paint. You're going to move a lot, but when you need it, it's there, but you're going to have both hands to you know uh, uh, you know do your objectives do your missions come back with props and stuff like that and you've always got it there to shoot it's going to work a lot better than a big gun that's uh, going to be shouldered in place so great job on the TPX I'll be doing a, a maintenance video on this here shortly but I just wanted to get it out there next gun is the Borg's X7 Phenom now we do have an efficiency test with this so let's go ahead and go outside and do an efficiency test really quick and come back for the opinion hey what's up fellas this is Mike and we're about to do the efficiency test on the Tipman Phenom and let's go ahead and show you the tank. I believe we're sitting right around about 4,300 PSI. And let's go ahead and take a tank temperature reading. And we're sitting right at about uh, 73, 75, about 70, there we go, so about 76 degrees. We'll set that down. Let's go ahead and load up our first pod. Now, I actually have lowered the rate of fire down on the Phenom to the slowest speed it'll go, which is eight balls per second. Now, the reason why I did that uh, was because the Cyclone does have a tendency to miss shots. So I wanted to make sure that we gave it every opportunity we could to um, uh, feed properly on every single shot. So it looks like we're sitting just a little bit low, so I'm gonna raise it just a smidge. There we go. There we go. 296, 297, 298. Can't beat that. And we've already got our first pod loaded up. And I'll set the chronograph here to the side. And then uh, we'll start shooting. Yep, looks like we just killed that, okay. 
There's not really a lot in there, but. Get it all. Okay. Side of the Tipman Phenom. Looks like we got two, four, six, seven, and probably a little over seven and a half pods, seven and three quarter pods. Thank you. Okay, so you saw the efficiency of the X7 Phenom. Now, probably what's one of my favorite things about the Phenom is that it still maintains the Tipman feel but it's regulated okay there's regulated air in here i can't begin to tell you how important it is for a good consistent accurate shot to have regulated air in here you take two guns same exact price same everything one regulated one not and the one that is regulated is going to shoot a lot better this gun shoots a lot better than the x7 shoots a lot better than the a5 it's just more of a crisp ching 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 nice crisp shot it's a lot quieter um it's a lot more consistent over the chronograph but I know we're in 2010 right now, and I know Tipman's a lot slow, you know, pretty slow to change. That was a big step for Tipman. <laughs> they, you need regulated guns in this environment right now. So that's a good step for them. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Now this one's got a couple little accessories on it. I mean, it's got the, um, you know, it's got the, uh, the laser pointer on it. But, um, you yeah, know, I may add just a couple ounces, but believe me, this is a featherweight compared to some of the Tipmans that I've seen at the field. There we go. This is for the Borg. Five pounds, 13.6 ounces. Five pounds, 13.6 ounces. Cool. And actually, while we're at it, let's just go ahead and weigh the, uh, let's go ahead and weigh the TPX pistol. That's not bad. One pound, 14.8 ounces. And before people are like, oh, that's heavy. Well, it's also got the 12 gram CO2 cartridge in there. So, pretty cool. But, so what did I think of the, what did I think of the Phenom? Phenom's a good shooter. Um, for my personal taste, a little too heavy, but, you know, my mic's, mic's a candy ass. Well, okay, well, I'll deal with that. But, you know, for me personally, I mean, you know, it's still, all, you know, very on the heavy side for me, but it definitely shoots a lot better than the X7 and the A5, I'll tell you that much. Now, something that I really like about it is I know some people, you know, they, they, they're turned off by electronics and paintball guns. That's okay. You don't need a battery to shoot this gun, okay? You only need it for the three shot or the full auto mode. But if you're just in semi-auto mode, it trips the regulator on its own, the on-off pin. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, you don't have to worry, but you can shoot this gun without a battery in it. No problem at all. So if you want to use the full auto or the burst mode or whatever, then you're going to need to put a battery in it. But you can shoot this gun in semi-auto, no battery, not a problem at all. But it's definitely a big step up for Tipman. I think it's a great step for, especially more so for the Tipman fanatics that are out there and the Tipman fans and the Tipman users. The Phenom is no joke, and it feels good. I like the fact that there's no macro line. You don't have to worry about a tombstone leak, and it goes right up through the gun. Good to go. Now, I'll do a maintenance video on this gun here shortly, but I had to get this video out there with the opinion because everyone's blowing up my email. And with that being said, you guys have been seeing us, you know, sporting the Angler MG42. If this breaks my scale... Eric Engler is going to be in big trouble. He's got to buy me another one. But um, I think this says it'll go up to like 50 pounds. We're going to find out right now. This is, this is going to easily be the heaviest gun ever weighed on the Tech PD show. And just to be safe, let's go ahead and put on the, uh, the hopper on it. Like, Mike, you weighed the, the MG42 <laughs> Phenom without a hopper on it. Your, your weight is off. Or like an ounce. The whole the whole show is flawed. Let's put this on here. There we go. Let's go ahead and put in the stock or the uh, the bipod. It's gonna make it a little easier. I don't even know if this is gonna even fit on my scale. Let's see if we can do this. This breaks my scale. You guys are in big big trouble. Let me sit here. Okay, that's not touching. Let's see how we're doing here.
There we go. Didn't break the scale, but we got it. Anyone want to take any guesses? Wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. 19 pounds, 1.4 ounces. 19 pounds, 1.4 ounces for the uh, Engler MG42 Phenom. So that's it. So I'll get some maintenance videos up here shortly, but I want to do the pinion videos real quick and uh, do the efficiency test. That's about it. Thanks for tuning in.